Hi again, Roy Nassari here, uh, showing you what external root resorption looks like under the microscope clinically. Uh, we see these often. Um, there's three things that are really needed for external root resorption. You need really microorganisms in the sulcus, natural cementum defects, probably some genetic component, and some trauma to the PDL, to the periodontal ligament around there, probably from orthodontics or from other trauma. In this case, uh, the patient was symptomatic, so we decided to uh, do something about it. You know, it's easy to recommend extraction, but on young patients, they want to try to keep their teeth. So, uh, root canal treatment was performed, although in, in ECIR cases, the pulp is vital, but there is communication. So, we start with the root canal treatment, uh, multiple rinses, uh, especially citric acid rinse, uh, which is done eventually. You can see here under the microscope, the treatment was done. There's perforation there, there's some bleeding, there's some ingrowth of uh, uh, gum tissue. And as we probe around the distal of the large defect that's there, uh, I notice some, some movement, some mobility of the dentin and started picking away at it. These, the bottom line is we really don't know what we're going to see when, until we go in there. The, uh, the structures are all compromised as we take a closer look, uh, and, and I diluted the hypochlorite to uh, you know, one tenth of the normal concentration. As you go in there and I rinse it through the microscope, you can see uh, just something looks a little bit um, suspicious on that distal. And a closer look reveals the resorption, uh, the resorptive dentin, or which could possibly be some bone ingrowth or some compromised tissue that's in there uh, it kind of flicks away and you can see in the video here I use the Endo Explorer DG16 under high magnification to flick away some of the, the structure that's there um, that's kind of loose already and this was pretty amazing to, to see it and you just flick it away and it's attached to some soft tissue there and there's some bleeding uh, the bleeding eventually stopped And I keep flicking away. It. And you're wondering why I'm even doing this. This looks pretty exciting, but again, our patients want to keep their teeth. And typically, we try to do nothing on these resorptive cases and just let the body naturally um, do its thing and try to watch them over time. But when they become symptomatic uh, and a decision has to be made, Oftentimes our patients want us to try to do something and this is today the best we have. So we took photographs, we took x-rays, we're taking videos and 3D imaging and uh, going in through the microscope to do the job. You can see what's still there that needs to be curetted out and as we look down the bleeding has stopped. There's some tooth structure there uh, in the more apical extent here and the more palatal. Really it's just a palatal extent and I'm just doing some more cure touch. The defect was restored with Brasso's root repair material. The buildup was amalgam and the tooth will be crowned uh, carefully leaving the distal area to, uh, to be more cleansable during cleanings and we'll continue to monitor this tooth. Thanks so much and please leave me your comments.